here with the creators and the star of The Legend of Korra, which is is like a, you know, I think here at Comic-Con, this has got to be amazing for you guys whenever you come here, given the reaction you've seen in the past. What's it like for you, Janet, to go out there and see the fans react to Legend of Korra? Um, it's like maybe one of my favorite things about the job, I think. Uh, it's It might actually be my favorite other than the process of actually being able to be Korra. But, um, you know, you do, you're in the room, you're recording. Um, you kind of have the, the, the experience of internally everybody kind of knowing how great the show is and how special it is, but it doesn't really become real in the same way as when you get out and you get to meet the fans and you get to see how it's impacting people and see the cosplayers and just feel like, you know, you're a part of something. I just feel so lucky to be a part of it and I never feel more lucky than when I am interacting with fans of the show. Janet mentioned the cosplayers. I've already seen a ton from your cool. show, from yeah. Airbender. You know, going back to Airbender, what's it been yeah, like yeah. to see sort of when you come here and how much people adore the, both the universe you've created at this point? Uh, it's crazy because we it's grown since we first, you know, we started coming like 2005, 2004. Yeah. And uh, just it's grown every year. And this year's even like promises to be bigger and crazier than ever, I think. Yeah, and I, it was an unofficial poll, but I, maybe a year ago, people were like, I think Korra was one of the most cosplayed mm -hmm. characters in the whole con, which... We love seeing cosplay. It's, it's always been a, a, a treat for us. And just knowing how much time and dedication and creativity people put into the interpretations and stuff. So um, knowing that they're, that you know Janet's character just took off and really resonated with people um, is just awesome. So, you know, Janet, what do you think it is? You know, because I mean, you came in, you know, since you weren't part of Airbender, uh, you knew about the world coming into it, and now you've seen with Korra the specific fandom mascot. And what do you think it is that does resonate with people and gets them so invested in it? Um, I think that's a really good question. I mean, I think the number one reason is the writing. I think that the the show has so much heart, and it's got the humor, and it has the adventure, and it has the conflicts that I think we can all relate to as human beings. But then you set it in this spectacularly gorgeous animated world where you know people have these extraordinary powers, and so it's it's just I think it's one of those. Story, it's it, their, their way of storytelling, these guys, is that classic way of storytelling, which is you get everything that you want from your own imagination and from their imaginations, but you also get the humanity that we all experience day to day. And, and so you're learning about, you're sort of experiencing your emotions about stuff that you yourself are going through, but you're seeing it played out in this gorgeous show. So it's like everything you could want. Going back to Airbender, was there a moment where you went, wow, this is this is hitting home with people. Like, this is really resonating with people. It takes us so long to make it. Go ahead. Yeah, no, I was say, I mean, it, pretty early on, we got some, in the early days of the internet, you know, we got some, or no, it, was, it was later in the internet, but in, in, in our experience on the internet, I should say, uh, you know, getting some fan reactions and stuff and realizing, like, oh, people really loved Zuko and, like, we're, like, totally into his character in a way that I had never imagined they would be, you know, and, and just seeing their reactions to that was really cool. Uh, at this point, any fan watching this has said, what's taken me so long to ask the question they all want to know, which is, when are we going to see book two? When's well, it going to air? Where, where, when does this interview air? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> people are no, watching. I think, I think we can finally, because this one's not live, right? Yeah. yeah. We can, uh, we're going to announce at the panel, or we just did announce, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're going get, to get to show it in September of this year, so we're excited that it's a very little, little more waiting, but it's going to be out soon. Yeah, right around the corner. Yeah. yeah. You know, can I ask, you know, because people were wondering, like, why is it taking so long? You know, because they, they love the show so much, they just wanted to see it right away. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, we were just saying, it's, there's no huge conspiracy. I think everybody thought it was, like, the evil corporation or the network shelving mm -hmm. the episodes. It's just a simple fact that Mike and Joaquim and I and Ryu and, and everybody, Lauren, Montgomery, we just set the bar so high mm -hmm. and it's a really hard show to make. And there really are very few people in the world qual qualified enough to draw it. Um, it's just a difficult show to make for TV. And um, and it's there's nothing like salacious. Like we just hit some snags in production and we're just because we care about making sure the show is really good, we didn't rush it. You know, we just made sure we f we could fix everything and get back on track, and and we're just super excited to finally put it out there. So there's no like exciting like dish. It's like if I if Mike and I sat here and unlaid it all out for you, it's like it's like a production report. Like, right, it's right. just boring. It's just boring stuff. But 
We want to see the documents. Yeah, the important thing is we're, it's it's right around the corner in September. We're so excited, and, and we're getting some of the best animation back we've ever gotten, like especially towards the end of the season and in the middle, and we're just like just just so excited to finally share it with the fans. And we know they're agitated, but we, we appreciate their patience, even if they don't know that they're being patient yet. <laughs> right. Uh, Janet, what can you say about where Cora's going to go this season after, you know, obviously she went through a lot in yeah. book one uh, and uh, when we pick up with her you know what do you think what's her focus now where is she going on her journey well i think you know everybody's excited to to know that i mean hopefully everybody's every, people are thrilled that you know cora has gotten to the place where she can go into the avatar state but um you know this this has happened right as we we're having this new development in this universe which is that these dark spirits are coming into the human world so uh, she's going to be tested in an entirely new way. So it is a little bit like, you know, there's there's no rest for the weary. It's you, you sort of get to a certain place and you feel like, oh, maybe I got this. And then you're bombarded with this whole new set of adventures. And, you know, this is happening as she's, you know, visiting her, her own family in the water, in the Southern Water Tribe. And, um, you know, it's, it can be difficult being around, uh, being around your folks. I mean, I think that's true for anybody, uh, n you know, notwithstanding being like the, the avatar and, you know, you're, sort of charged with saving the world and by the way maybe your mom doesn't approve of something you're doing or wearing i don't know you know it's there's a lot there's a lot of layers going on so it's a great book two is extraordinary i'm so excited for everybody to see it we know book two is uh called spirits can you guys elaborate that on a little and say uh what we're gonna see amongst the spirit world well yeah it's to, to go off what uh, janet was saying it's it's definitely Cora's like next step in her like spiritual evolution and journey and path of self-actualization and, uh, and all this good stuff where she's you know what the kids like yeah yeah <laughs> kids, kids love South Africa, oh, so a absolutely if I can say it yeah uh, <laughs> yeah uh, so yeah she's coming up against these you know seeing more of the spirit world and these spirits that are not so happy with you know the way the human world has treated spirits or kind of falling out of balance yeah things are just kind of out of whack and and it's people are looking to her to kind of like patch it up because historically the avatar was supposed to be this bridge between the two realms and it's and not uh, her forte. it's not her forte so <laughs> uh, you mentioned uh, we were joking about the kids but you know as you well know uh, there are kids who love this show and yeah, then there yeah. are people much older than kids who love yeah, that show that's what I love about it man. Yeah. 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 Uh, you know when you created it when you created Airbender and now with Cora did you think of it as something that could have that cross-generational yeah, appeal for sure I mean Mike and I uh, the network approached us about coming up with whatever their own, like Harry Potter or Lord of the Rings, uh, could be, and and those those awesome properties do that. You know, mm -hmm. they they were maybe more fantasy based or you know young adult or, or youth novels, but um, but they obviously resonate with people all over the world, different cultures, and whether or not you have kids or you read them when you're young and you still like them when you're old or you just read them when you're older and. So um, Mike and I love stuff like Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings, so we just wanted to make something. The, the, the test audience is just me and Mike. It's just we just make sure we like it and then that we believe it's good and has integrity. And um, yeah, I, I joke about the like spiritual journey stuff, but I mean that stuff's really important to us and we think that can resonate with young children or adults and, and it, it has for 10 years or so now. So. Uh, you yeah, the, the best comments we always get are like from parents who are like, "Man, I can watch this show with yeah. my kids, and I love it, and they love it, and it's and it's so yeah. awesome that they can enjoy it as a family." What's it like for you, Janet? You know, because and we've joked about this before, but it's like then you've got people say who are so invested in the love stories, and are they <laughs> they even take sides in like the love triangle? Is it funny for you to see like that sort of passionate outpouring of the fans? I mean, it's funny, but it, it makes sense to me in, in the sense that, again, you know, these guys are just doing this, this such a great job of classic storytelling, but always coming up with new and inventive things. I think you get really wrapped up in it. I think because of the, the heart that I mentioned before in the show, you come to really care about these characters. And goodness knows, like, I watch shows where I find myself thinking about the characters when I'm not watching it. And, you know, sometimes I'll finish a series from beginning to end and I'll like miss those characters. So I would be the, the wrong person to, to pass judgment on that. I think uh, it so speaks to how ship? great of a show. Who do you ship on <laughs> Mad Men? Or? Uh, oh! <laughs> 
It's true. I do have feelings about stuff like that. <laughs> um, I really do. Uh, so yeah. So when people ask, you know, yeah, who who I would ship with uh, with in, you know in the Corey universe, I have I have <laughs> answers. I have people know what I answer. They know I like a funny guy. You know, they know oh. I like a funny guy. Funny guy. So yeah. <laughs> Um, you recently announced some of the people that are coming on this, this season, yep. some of the actors. Can you talk yeah. about those actors and the roles they're going to play? Yeah, we have some awesome uh, actors this season. Uh, James Remar is playing Tonrock, who's uh, Cora's father. Uh, and he's kind of this like, gruff warrior guy, but he's got kind of a sensitive soft side and is very protective of Cora. And they have a little little bit of a conflict over, like, you know, hey, Dad, I'm the Avatar. I, I, know, I know what I'm doing, and he's, like, still... You know, the dad who wants to make sure his daughter's okay. And uh, and then we have uh, uh, Lisa Edelstein's playing Kaya, who is uh, Tenzin's sister. Mm -hmm. uh, she's a waterbender and kind of a little bit of a hippie kind of lady, like more dialed into, like, you know, the healing kind of stuff. And then Richard. there, yeah, Richard Reel is uh, Boomy, who's the uh, brother of, of uh, Tenzin and Kaya. He's Aang's other son. Hilarious. Yeah, really, yeah. really funny guy who just t tells these like ridiculous tall tales and and stuff um, richard anytime we're in the booth and he's or you know in the recording studio and richard's in the booth like i'm just crying yeah. like he's just <laughs> hilarious uh and steven yun just got announced as the first avatar one and uh we're excited he's, he's awesome. he plays a really yeah, from pivotal dead. <laughs> what, what? Are, what? Saying, are we have we announced um i want to say sure i know? can't <laughs> I can't. No, we I can't read have. this. <laughs> uh, we got Aubrey Looking. Plaza. Yes. Aubrey Plaza is, is uh, Cora's cousin. She's we're huge fans of Parks and Rec, so she's great. Yes. Um, and and <laughs> John Michael Higgins. Yes. As we are allowed a, to say John this, Michael uh, Higgins. This wacky. Uh, I think we're gonna read your lips at this point. Yeah, I he's know. this billionaire yeah. philanthropist. I was crazy guy. sure. I really was pretty sure, but I still <laughs> get scared Higgins, sometimes. Another one. I'm such a huge fan. Yeah. Anything that comes out of that guy's mouth is hilarious. Yeah. So. Well, guys, before I let you go, one, one question I have to ask is one of those things where a year ago there was an article about Paramount getting back into animation more, and they named right. some titles that they might do as movies. Right. Korra was mentioned. Is there anything going on with possibly doing an animated Korra film? We, I mean, we, we have good contacts with the people at Paramount, um, some executives there, really cool people, and, and Mike and I have definitely stayed in touch with them. We, I cannot convey how busy we are on The Legend of Korra. I mean, if the delay wasn't, like, you know, enough of a signifier, like, we're doing three seasons at one time. We're doing books two, three, and four all at the same time. We barely had time to come down here, but obviously it's important and we love doing it. So um, Mike and I just have the blinders on, you know, noses to the grindstone with, with all of our amazing crew. So... We would love to do it. There is nothing official in the works right now. It doesn't mean it couldn't happen. It doesn't mean we don't want it to. It just means they know, like, <laughs> everybody at Paramount knows, like, leave them alone. Let them finish the show. And, and uh, so who knows? Who knows? You know, it's, well, you know, it, we, the crazy thing is animation takes so long, and then all of a sudden it's all going to be over. Right. And, you know, we're, we're going to be airing the shows and stuff. So we'll see. I mean, I'll... They'll find me on a desert island uh, with a coconut cracked <laughs> open, you know, <laughs> relaxing after we finish this stuff. But we'll see what happens after. <laughs> well, guys, uh, thanks, Mike, Brian, Janet. Thanks for joining thanks. us. Have a great time at the convention. And uh, keep it locked at IGN for more from Comic-Con. Thanks.